while you're thinking, I'd like to take a moment to make a comment here. Earlier in the session, I was discussing the uh, core comp disc controller card, and, and there were a few times I made the comment, we. And the we I was referring to at that time was uh, Steve Milden and uh, myself. Uh, uh, we're the ones that worked on the DSR and the disk manager for core comp. When I said we, I did not mean to associate myself with core comp. Uh, as a lot of people are aware, there are problems, and I've disassociated myself with them at this time. Since this is on videotape, I kind of wanted to get that down right now. Thank you. Did you remember? Yeah. Okay. Does each DSR have its own buffer space, or is it a used RAM? Or oh, uh, it depends on the DSR. Now, the disk controller has a VDP RAM buffer for the disk controller. It uses yeah, it uses the disk file buffer space down there. Okay, the RS-232 card only has a one byte buffer. Okay. It's located at hex 5000 when the DSR is enabled. 5000? Yeah, anything 5000 and up. So 5000 through 5FFFF, is, it's not decoded. So we're back to that. You write something to 5000 and the whole address block changes to that byte. But it's only one byte. There is no big buffer there. There is a routine in the RS-232 card for an input buffer. And it's an interrupt-driven routine, and it allows input to come in. And they call it a, a circular input buffer, interrupt-driven circular input buffer. And what that basically means is you set up some pointers in VDP RAM, and you activate this routine. It's an interrupt-driven routine. And as data comes in, it starts right into the buffer. When the buffer gets full, it goes back to the top and writes over it again. So it's a circular buffer. Now, where do we find information on the DSR with the DSR? As far as uh, source code or? Well, source code or anything. We're looking into a, we've been talking with TI on certain things. And it looks like uh, that they're going to allow us to do a few things that I didn't think they'd ever allow. So we're looking at what we can do to release more information than just the memory maps that we've been releasing. Well, you know, you could dump it, pull it out, pull it into expansion RAM with debugs. Uh-huh. And actually, I have this assembly. You know, it's kind of... Right. Now, the next issue of the newsletter, which is should be out uh, in the mail Friday, has a memory map of the RS-232 card, and it shows where this circular in, in input buffer starts, you know, the routine for it starts. Basically, if you know what a DSR header looks like from that one-fourth program that we put out that, that brings up all the DSR headers and points to the application interrupt routine, pull the interrupt routine start address out of there, and that's the start of that routine. Okay. And that'll show you where that buffer is then. So, see, now you have to set that up. You can set that up. Fourth yeah, fourth it's easier. Yes? Some of the bigger systems I've worked with, they added catch memory and getting and things. Does that offer any possibilities of well, there's a, a cache memory per se, like on the Winchester disk, was it 4K? And I think MyArk on their uh, disk controller card has, uh, I don't know, is it 1K or 2K? Does anybody know for sure? I'm not sure. I think it's uh, 2K of, of buffer out there for, it, for its use on their uh, regular floppy disk, double-sided, double-density disk controller card. The CoreComp card does not have, it only has uh, 64 nibbles, 32 bytes. And it's not really for use, your use at all. It's just for our use, uh, is what it was. We just we put it out there so that we can make the card compatible with Pascal. Uh, but as far as uh, basically, that is mainly used for I/O. Okay, so it would be as a print spooler, which I understand that uh, who is it, Meyer, that just came out with the 128k card with a print spooler in it. And, uh, or you're going to use it for input from the disk drive just to hold something so you don't have to keep activating your drive in order to go out and read the next sector or read the next record in a file. That's what that's used for. So you would have to modify the DSR or buy a card that has a DSR with a buffer on it already, such as the, the MyArt card. Okay. And it does improve performance a little bit. Yes. You want to go on the other question? Okay. Well, this is the first question. How does one read and write to the sector header? Yeah, well, it, yeah, I believe he's referring to how does one read and write a sector. And uh, let's, let's do that.
Is yellow or white better for you, Fred? Yellow. 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 Cut it out. All right. Now, let me think about this for a second. How do get started here? All right, first of all, the read and write a sector from the disk. Uh, there is a routine built into the disk controller card. There are a number of subroutines built into the disk controller card, and this is one of them. And this subroutine is known as, as subprogram hex 10. And if you turn on the disk controller card, you know, with the debug, crew base 1100, and I think on the TI card, I think you write a 100 to it. And, it, uh, and that will enable the card. You'll know when it's enabled, the light comes on, on the TI disk controller card. At the top of the card, you'll find a standard uh, DSR header up there. And it's on the standard DSR header, which I did once in, in the newsletter. But let's, I believe 